Michael Keaton is 73 years old. This guy has the energy of a 22-year-old. When I tell you that he does not lose a step, well, nothing. He's not stepped into the shoes of this character in 30 years. And just how effortless it was, I was that was just what shocked me the most. I was like, bro, it's the same character. Like, in a world of remakes, reboots, all this kind of crap, to see just the amount of creativity in this film is astonishing. I have a confession to make. I have a confession to make. I wasn't the biggest fan of the Beetlejuice film. I never was. Like, um, growing up, I know people who watched it, it was a very popular film, but personally for me, I was never the biggest fan. I mean, the film was cool. It wasn't bad, you know, but bro, Batman, Batman Returns, Edward, Sleepy Hollow, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Uh, you can name almost a lot of Tim Burton films that I would put ahead of Beetlejuice just for personal preference. So I was never the film's biggest fan, but I was a huge fan of the character. I thought like the Beetlejuice character, I said, no, this is a very interesting character. So what drew me to the film was just how amazing the character was for me. It was easily the best thing by the entire film. Everything else, eh, it was cool, but this character, amazing. I was like, wow, damn. And then what was just so crazy was how the same guy who did Beetlejuice and that crazy Zinni character was the same guy who sort of toned things down and sort of gave you that very repressed, deep, very serious, dark character of Bruce Wayne and Batman. It just shows it's called acting, you know. So, um, but yeah, so that, so that was what's... So when they were making a sequel, I was like, okay, I'm interested to revisit this. Not because I was a huge fan of the first film, because I was just a huge fan of what Tim Burton and Michael Keaton created, which is just such an iconic character. Because that's real. This is an iconic character. Whether you love the film or do not like the film, everyone has to agree that this was an amazing creation, a truly original creation. And guys, I mean, we'll talk about the film and everything, man. But um, And I'll get back to, to this, man. Michael Keaton is 73 years old. This guy has the energy of a 22-year-old. When I tell you that he does not lose a step. I was shocked. Like at the, at the beginning, I was like, okay, he doesn't be old. By the time I, you got to his third, fourth scene, I was like, it's literally, it's the same character. <laughs> it's basically, there is nothing that, at no moment did I think, oh, he's getting a little bit older, or that the energy, the electricity, the vibrant nature of the character, it was, it's, it's, it's just so amazing how 30 years, since he played the character. Remember, there was no sequel, nothing. He's not stepped into the shoes of this character in 30 years. And just how effortless it was, I was that was just what shocked me the most. I was like, bro, it's the same character. Like, I was, there was just times in the cinema where I was like, bro, this guy is 73. This guy is 73 and he's acting like his 30-year-old self back in, what, 1988. So I was like, no, that, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy. So yeah, no, because, yeah. Um, look, amazing. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know, because I think, you know, he, he was probably 40 when he did that in 88 because he's, he's 73 now. But amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like, if you see the film, you want to just say, Michael Keaton, this is a special dude, bro. This is, this is a special, special dude. And I was watching interviews. And, like, in the interviews, he said that um, he wanted, if he was going to come back, he didn't want the case to be where, oh, Beetlejuice is in every scene like that. What's, and what makes the first film so good? Do you know his, Beetlejuice is hardly in the film? That is what makes the film so brilliant. The whole point of it is that it's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. But because it's such a crazy character, it's the notion of less is more. So every time he was on screen, like, man, you wanted more. And because you wanted more, they, they peeled you away. And because... I, I was worried because at first you see quite a, a, a bit of him and it goes more into the background of his character. But I liked how, no, they pulled back, they pulled back. And it was, it's literally the same as the first film. He's not in it that much, but he's in it enough to make more of a, an, an impact. Okay, here's the thing. So basically, a large part of this story centers on the father, Mr. Dietz, Charles Dietz. 
Now, this is the actor Jeffrey Jones. This was in Amadeus, you know, played, I think, the, the emperor of Austria in Am Am Amadeus. So he got into some legal trouble. Let's just say it involves stuff that's illegal, pictures, and children. That's all I'm saying. He is a registered offender. <laughs> Literally, he's a registered offender. So due to that, there was no chance in six hells he could be in this film. But what Tim Burton does is he finds a very creative way to put him in the film, but he's not in the film. So Jeffrey Jones, the actor, isn't in the film, but the character is in the film. When you watch it, you will see. And how they do it and just how inventive they actually do it. I was like, okay, the, only Tim Burton could, in his crazies anyway, could think of the inventors or how, how, how to bring this in, man. So that was cool. Um, look, shout out to Winona Ryder, man. She was good. She was good, man. You know, she she did her thing. She aged pretty well. She's all right. She aged, aged pretty well. And I think she still kept, I think she's, she kept the spirit of the character, but sort of 30 years on, if that makes sense. So yeah, she was she was cool. She, she was cool. She was cool. She was cool. Shout out to um, um, her as well, man. Um, and I think obviously the new one, Jenna Ortega, good. You see, it's very hard to find a current actress who understands the kind of Tim Burton world and the Tim Burton aesthetic. So remember, she's the star of the Wednesday series that Tim Burton did. So I think because of how well she did in that Wednesday series, Tim Burton knew, yeah, but this is our in into the sequel because it's really about her. You know, because she's the next generation. She's the daughter of obviously the Lydia character. And I thought she, she, she was good. She was cool. She was cool. Now, I was very impressed with her. Um, Catherine O'Hara, who was in the first film. After Michael Keaton, she was the next best actor in this film. She was really good. I was like, from I was like, ah, she's really good. Like every scene she was in, every line she had, I was like, this she is really good. This, I mean, so I was so impressed by her, Catherine O'Hara. She was so good. Like her lines were funny, her character was funny, her character was weird, but weird in the right. And just every line she was given, she just hit the nail on the head with every line. I just thought she was brilliant. She was really good. I mean, after Michael Keaton, she was the second best actor in this. So she was really good. She was really good. Again, shout out to like, Monica Bellucci. Okay, she was fine. William Dafoe was interesting though. William Dafoe was interesting. Um, so I mean, no, he was cool. William Dafoe was, was cool. Monica Bellucci, yeah, she was fine. She was fine. You see, Tim Burton, man. Tim Burton. You see, here's the thing, man. Me and Tim Burton, we have a, we have a close relationship, bro. Um, you see, so I have a Batman wallet. I have a Batman poster. Um, when you enter my apartment, my, my flat, it says, welcome to the Batcave with the Batman logo. And I've got a Batman mug. So let's just say I am Batman obsessed. When I say Batman obsessed, I'm talking Tim Burton's Batman. I'm not really a Batman fan. I'm a Tim Burton Batman fan. Because, bro, it is the film I've watched more than... I've watched the film probably over 100 times. But the thing about Tim Burton is this is what you call a true, genuine artist. But God, don't watch that bomb-ass trash, Deadpool and Wolverine, and that other rip-off, Alien Romulus. And to see something truly original, truly unique, this is a guy that you, we have to champion. In a world of remakes, reboots, all this kind of crap... To see just the amount of creativity in this film is astonishing. The set design, use of animatronics, and just the ideas. I was like, bro, like, watching, I was like, bro, I am thoroughly entertained. And you know what's so funny? In a normal world where there are more good films than original films, this is a black hair guy. In today's world where the artistry is so trash, this film sticks out like a sore thumb. Because I'm like... Bro, it was such a breath of fresh air because I'm so frustrated by the lack of originality and creativity in the films. Just to see what he did with this, I was like, nah, 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 nah. Give, give him his props. Give, give this man his flowers. Give this man his flowers. Like, absolutely amazing, man. And, bro, just th both of these guys, man. I'm so, I'm so happy they got the chance to do a sequel because I think what these guys have reminded you is. Quality is quality is quality is quality. Just those, there are two sort of creations, i.e. what they did with Beetlejuice 
and what they did with Batman, I'm like, these are very, these are two very special people. One, an absolutely amazing underrated actor and one of the most unique creative minds in cinema history. So I was just, just so amazing to see these guys 30 plus years on remind people about true, true artistry, absolute true artistry. So my thing though is, because so I liked this film more than the first film, but again, I didn't, I was not a fan of the first one. The first one was, I was not a fan. So I just, I just thought like some of the twists, some of the ideas, the storyline, I connected more with this film than the previous film. So for me, I liked it. Like it's not the most amazing film. It's not perfect. There are bits that are, so it's not an amazing film. It's not a masterpiece, but what it is, it's entertaining. You will be entertained. I, I struggle to believe that even if you don't like this film, I struggle to believe that you will be bored watching this film, this film will entertain you. That's, I am absolutely sure of, man. So, shout out to these guys, man. But again, man, I've just got to just give, bro, um, Michael Keaton, man. Michael freaking Keaton. 73 years old. I mean, when you just watch his performance of this character, and you just look at just how much energy he gave this character and just how again I have he did not lose a step. I thought he look he's, he's a bit older. He was really have that thing and because the danger you would just feel like as if ah, yeah man it doesn't bro it's like it is the same. It is literally the same. <laughs> amazing, absolutely amazing with what what he did. Just at to able to still give that much energy to that character thirty plus years on. Applaud, 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 applaud. So. You might be wondering, why am I putting this up? You see, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I don't want to spoil this for anybody. But there is something in this film that has something to do with Batman Returns, Tim Burton, and people's critique of what Tim Burton did in Batman Returns. Again, when you see it, you will know, because when I saw it, I, I, was, I, I, I almost laughed out loud. I was like, oh, but I know what Tim Burton is doing. There's a reason why he cast that dude as the reason why he puts that dude in that scene. Again, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but when you see it, you're like, hey, Timmy, I see you. Timmy, I see you. I see you, Timmy. So that was cool. That was cool, man. And another thing, I don't want to spoil it. There is a scene where it is so shocking, so crazy. Only one man can do it, which is Timothy Button. Again, I don't want to spoil it for you. But when you see it, you're like, <laughs> I laughed out loud. I laughed out loud. And I was about to say that this is only Tim Burton could put something like this in. Because I think with Tim Burton, it's an acquired taste. Because for me, I'm one of those guys where I don't know whether you guys have seen this from Cops Bride. I love Cops Bride. Like, I think that's, that's just the, the jokes, the ideas. That's just, I just, I love that film. But for some guys, they may think it's weird and odd. For me, I think that film's amazing. Like, Corpse Bride, that is such a good film in terms of its creativity, the ideas, and just the story and how the story is done. I just thought that's amazing. So Tim Burton, he's an acquired taste. But whether you, even if you don't like his films, you have to appreciate his very unique artistic mind, and you have to give that guy his flowers. <laughs>